pants are going to shrink down, and they may look a little kind of gnarled to begin with. You just kind of let the the fabric settle, and you can see there it starts to, to settle in a little bit the way you want. Now I'll stop that. There we go. And gravity is on. And before I actually start doing anything else, let's actually go to the simulation parameters, turn off use sewing springs, and do another simulate local so that all of this kind of pulls itself together. Now again, I'm working with the pants. I made sure I've got it selected, pants ref. Go into group sub-object mode once again. into wireframe and again I can select what would be the waistband and just kind of check and make sure I don't have all sorts of extra verts that I don't need so something like that get rid of a few of these kind of stragglers here these extras that I really don't need and we'll just complicate things a little bit so I'll hit make seam or make group, excuse me, and I'll call this uh, waist band. Say OK. And then I can either select uh, the surface of the shirt to have it affixed to or the mesh. So in this case, I'm going to select the shirt because it's now a collision object. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink these verts just a little bit this time. Not nearly as much as I did with the shirt because I don't need them to be that much. I'm going to do like 0 0.985. Okay. And I can get out of that mode. Go back into my normal view. And there is my, my shirt and again I can hit simulate local and so that all kind of pulls itself together I'll hit escape and now I'm ready for stage two of my simulation to basically um, get it where I want it to um, now question comes up that you know what happens if I've messed up and there's not something I like I can certainly hit reset state and it's only going to affect these pants. It's not going to reset the state of the shirt. I'm not going to lose what I've done to date. So, um, you know, if I wanted to, let's just go ahead and hit reset state. You'll notice the pants jump back, but the shirt has not. Now, again, I get these unwanted faces. It simply is because I've turned off use sewing springs. So I turn them on, hit reset state again. The pants set themselves back the way I want them to. What I would want to do at that point is go to the waistband verts and turn that constraint off for now because I don't need it. Simulate local to let that pull itself back together. Let the pants reattach themselves. So you can see the process is it's just a matter of thinking through things. You have to be methodical about this and it's it's a fairly straightforward shot at that point to building multi uh, layered clothing. You just do it in passes. It makes life simple. You tend to avoid a lot of the potential pitfalls that you might get otherwise by trying to do multiple cloth to cloth collisions and all of that which is oh so much fun. And it's like who has time to to worry about that so Again, I'll hit simulate local, pull all that together, and then inside a group, waistband, let's turn that constraint on, and one more time, simulate local, let the pants kind of pull themselves back together, and then it's off to simulation time again so that I can simulate the pants moving along. Uh, again, I'm not going to bore you with those details. I'll be right back. Okay, so now that the uh, pants have been simmed, 
Let's kind of uh, rotate around here. And you can see he's running along. He hits the brakes and comes to a stop. And of course I'm getting all of the the creasing across the pants as the, as the character is moving. It is affixed to the shirt, so as the shirt moves those pants will slide subtly. Getting all the nice creasing across the back of the legs. And I could probably throw a relax modifier on that at the very end and, and smooth it down. But it's time to, to move on to the last section here which is the top coat. So let's look at that and actually I'll, I'll talk about these. I've actually gone ahead and added a couple of extra objects. Let's unhide again the top coat and at this point I really do still need to do some seams. Again it's a reference. Can't tell you enough times use this. Use this method. It will save you in so many instances when it comes time to, to tweak your mesh, to make your garments a little bit bigger for a character, whatever it is, you will find that you can't live without this. So, not to be too dramatic about it, but you get the point. Okay, so for this one, for Garment Maker, I'm going to go into Seam Subobject Mode, and I'm going to start building some seams. Now, this is a pretty complex pattern here, especially as it comes to these these areas right here and you might be looking at it going well, what is that form that's actually a collar that comes across the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my shaded mode and I'm going to select these seams to begin with because those are straightforward those just come across the shoulder without any problem and then I know that I've got a seam down here when I look at the pattern or when I looked at the pattern I broke it here so I could actually stitch these two areas together. So I'll create a seam here. And now I've got a seam here and a seam here. Well, I want this seam, and when you think about it, it's going to wrap across his shoulder into the back here. So I want to select that one. So these two are going to come together. I'll hit Create Seam. Now, by default, and this is kind of an interesting little thing. This is, this is a little bit of a trick. Um, you've got to think about how your patterns come together. Right now it's got this outer corner coming to this edge. You can see by this spring line, by this sewing spring, it's going to put that there. So it's going to pull this garment backwards, as it were. Really what I want to have happen is have that point affixed here because it's going to form the back edge of the collar. This and this edge are going to come together. And so this point needs to be here. So in this case, I need to reverse that seam out so that now I get this spring line running all the way to here. Okay? And it's a little bit tricky. You have to think about these things sometimes. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to select that, those two, because they're the straightforward ones. Create a seam, uh, seam right there. Grab those two, create a seam so that gets pulled together. Grab these two, create the seam. And it looks like this one it got right. So let's double check it. So, yep, it does. This outside point is going to be affixed here, which is where we want it, because we want this line and that line to come together. But before we start stitching those together, let's get the, uh, the arms themselves. And that one, let's make that a multi-segment so that we can affix it to the arm socket. We'll hit Create. And if we look closely, we'll see that these are actually crossed over. So we'll reverse that seam out so that everything is nice and neat. And again, we have a couple of multi-segments to create. So we're going to make that a multi-segment. And that a multi-segment. Now it's interesting, if I tried to, sti to stitch these two together, I'm going to get a seam line topology and it's wrong. And the reason that is, is I've got a dart right here that needs to be closed first. Right now I have a surface that isn't contiguous. You know, I've got a seam line that doesn't have anything connecting it. Cloth doesn't know what to do when you get to that kind of a situation. So I'll close that up. And now when I select these two and hit Create Seam, no problem. It works right out of the gate. Okay, so... Let's continue on here.